Hello everybody, today I'm gonna to clean up a pair of Allen Edmonds Park Avenues that I picked up recently from a thrift store for uh, 20 bucks. Size 14, okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cord. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. The leather is in excellent condition. It looks a little dry, uh, but this is, as most Allen Edmonds shoes are, full grain leather. You can see the pores. But if you look, even though the surface looks dry, it's pliable, it's not damaged in any way. The leather's in excellent condition. It's just very thirsty. These are gonna clean up really nice. I see zero evidence of any cracking. I don't even see any major scuffs. Uh, you know, you see some creasing there, and that's from not using shoe trees, but they're not too bowed. Um, these are gonna come out really nice. Um, see the other shoe here? Same thing, really dry, just dirty. Not filthy dirty, they're a little bit dirty. Leather is in excellent condition. Again, soles are in great condition. See that logo, which means these are original soles. Heels aren't even in too bad condition, not even worth replacing. Um, one thing I'm gonna point out, which I have pointed out before with Allen Edmonds shoes. Allen Edmonds shoes, if you can see here, this is the heel, uh, it's like a particle leather heel base. There's the top lift. But in between the two, it's kind of hard to tell on video, but this layer right here, so this is where this top lift is. This is the uh, fiberboard heel base. This layer right in between, you see it's black. That is a layer of rubber. You want to replace Allen Edmonds heels before it wears into this rubber, because this piece of rubber is nailed to the heel block, okay? So, these still have a lot of life left in them. By the way, size 14, see there, D is standard width, so size 14. And you can see 5875, that's the model number. Again, no date code. Uh, here's a pair of size nine Bostonian classics. I'll put them in the same focal plane just to, look at these things are huge. Isn't that funny? Anyway. By the way, I do not have any shoe trees. This is an extra large shoe tree um, that fit my like 11 and a half extra wide shoes, but I don't have any shoe trees large enough to put any tension, you know, uh, on, on the shoes. So what you do is you take a box top, uh, this case, just, you know, cut it in half, and then you can kind of do this with it. Curve it a little bit. Stick it back in there. And that should give you a little bit of extra tension, right? Now you've got a nice fitting shoe tree. And as usual, I forgot to take the laces out, so take the shoe trees back up. Let's take the laces out so I can, you know, really polish them well and moisturize here without getting polish and stuff on the uh, on the shoelaces, because shoelaces are in good shape. Okay. I think, don't think you necessarily, well, I'm almost done. I was going to say, I don't think you necessarily need to see me at full speed taking the shoelaces out, but you know, you get the idea. Another quick tip, if you're working on multiple pairs of shoes, you will want to mark the laces, because they'll get confused, you have no idea. So you see I just wrote AEPA 14D for the size. There's another pair I'm working on, BOST for Bostonian 12-3E, so that you don't get them all confused and lost. Now, in my previous older videos, I used to use a bit of saddle soap. Um, I, I don't know, I, after an interview with Andy Vaughn, owner of Pure Polish Products, I've kind of moved away from it. I just don't feel it's necessary. Um, and he was saying some things about it can have a negative effect on the pH of the leather. I just don't feel it's necessary. These are not horribly dirty. They just look more dry than dirty. So what I'm gonna use to clean these shoes of the first step is uh, Pure Polish Products. Cleaner conditioner, cleaner conditioner, two different aspects. If I just want to get the conditioning properties, I learned this from Andy, you just use your finger and put it on. Now, in this case, I want to clean as well as condition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a fairly clean cotton cloth here, and I'm going to apply this with a cotton cloth because this has uh, orange oil in it. That's the main uh, um, solvent in it. And using a cloth, the orange oil, that's going to pull off impurities off of the surface. 
and then you have the beeswax and coconut oil that are going to penetrate the leather and um, nourish it as well okay so i'm gonna be pretty liberal with it this stuff has lasted quite a while I've got a little chunk of blue in there that was from one of the leather dyeing should probably get rid of that i really need to do something with that but so and it's non-toxic is another wonderful thing so i'm just gonna get a spot here be fancy with it and I'm gonna start with the left shoe get quite a bit on there just gonna start with the vamp where I usually do and I'm applying moderate pressure and I'm working in little one-inch circles I want to get up even under that edge there and see look at that that's Part of the darkening is just wet. Let's go through this thing, see how much, if anything, it pulls off. I'm telling you the weather will look so much better though. See that color? It's darkening a bit on the shoe, which means it's penetrating. I'm gonna stick my finger way down in there to try to get up under that welt. I wanna clean and condition under the welt because that's where moisture is gonna go. See that? It's it's darkening. I'm pulling dirt off. Impurities. I'm going to double up here right around the eye stays. A lot of the leather's under a lot of stress. All right, I'm going to get the tongue. I'm not going to go crazy. I could pull a shoe tree out, but. I'm going to get the back side of the eye stays a little bit. I didn't get this eye stay. Part of the battle, I think, is just remembering what you've done and what you haven't. Try and get, like I said, down in there. I'm going to move to a little cleaner spot. up here especially right around that back back strap there key place where the leather is going to be under stress and crack or tear And a little bit on the toe cap. I don't want to do the toe cap too heavily. A, I've never seen a toe cap crack. Yeah, maybe once, but almost never do they ever crack on the toe cap. But I don't want the leather on the toe cap too saturated with moisturizer, too greasy. See, now I'm using a dry part to kind of wipe the extra off because I don't want it to make it harder to uh, do the mirror shine. Now that is good and cleaned and conditioned, and that definitely needs to sit. Uh, uh, back of this does tell you to let it, if you look at the directions, let it sit for one to two hours. I found that to be a very critical step. Otherwise you have the leather will feel greasy. Let it penetrate into the leather and do its job. I could even do one more round without a rag after this if I wanted to, which I may do just, um, um, you know, around areas like the vamp. But off camera, I'm gonna do the other side.
Now they're certainly coming around uh, for the polish stage. Um, still got a lot of Saphir polish. I'm going to use Saphir uh, Bordeaux. I'm just going to use this versus a pre pure polish. Um, I do have pure polish at burgundy, but this burgundy is actually more of a see kind of a light brown color, which yeah, that could work too. But I would like to accentuate this darker color. And you see the Bordeaux's got that that darker tone to it, so I think I'm going to use this. That's set up. Oops, almost forgot. Now that that's done. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little black cream polish and See the difference? And since I'm on the Saphir roll here with this, I might as well try to use this up. This is the mirror gloss. Honestly, it's been a while since I've used this stuff. You know what? I can see the black globbing up. I don't like that. I'm stripping it all back off.
Hang on it. No cleaner. Reno mat, solvent, great for removing really harsh built up dirt, wax, and stuff off shoes, but I'll show you what I'm going to use it for. Paint pen. Gonna go in the grooves. Finishing touches, just some whatever neutral polish of whatever I can find. Oh, it's almost new. Whatever I can find laying around. Load her up. I don't like to put a lot, like, especially, it depends what I'm doing with the shoes. If I'm putting the shoes on, like, eBay or the Brogue Exchange to sell, I don't like to make I don't like to try to make the worn area unworn I believe that's deceptive a little bit's okay with that set up and I'll show you the result And here they are all finished up. I'll also tell you a little bit about the dating of these things. So as I mentioned earlier, you can see here the size 14D. Model number 5875 is a clue. The fact that there is no date code. If there was a date code, generally you see a model number on the second line, I believe. And then uh, oftentimes the word COMB, comb, as in combination last, sometimes not. And then the date code would be a four digit number to the right of that. So this has no date code. The logo uh, with the big A, the big E, you know, that style, Times New Roman font, the rest in lowercase, uh, was used first in 1989 until about uh, 2015 or so. Um, and the black insole is another clue. I believe this black insole, based on me looking up the year by year by year, the Allen Edmonds catalogs, was used from like 2008 until 2011 or 12. So I know this is um, between 2008 to 2012 because of the black insole. Uh, with a gold font. Um, so then I looked up through isuu.com. I looked at the catalogs for years 2008 through 2012 and the model number 5875. That color is Merlot. Uh, that's not Oxblood. Oxblood is a little lighter. I think the closest they have to this is the um, uh, current Burgundy, but this color is Merlot. So don't they look pretty nice? There's the mirror shine. Both together. I love this color. The ox blood, burgundy, merlot. This is, I think, my favorite color for shoes. I think it looks absolutely stunning with uh, navy and uh, medium blues. I think it looks good with charcoal. Looks great with black. 
use it with, uh, you know, even like khaki tan. And you saw me shine up the heels a little bit there. The heel counters a little bit too, nothing crazy. I would wear these, by the way, with like an un undistressed dark colored, like either black or uh, navy blue jeans. You know, when you're a, a casual, some people say, oh, I shouldn't wear Oxford or something like that, but I totally would, especially this darker color. It's great with a suit, uh, a suit with an Oxford collar shirt, no tie. Um, you know, it's just a great look. So um, it's very versatile. Like I said, kind of goes with almost everything. And you've got that bit of color, uh, you know, without kind of being too bold or a too light of a color and too casual. There you go. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you've ever found a deal at a thrift store that was so good you felt like you were doing something illicit, you may want to subscribe to my channel. I generally try to release videos Friday at 5 p.m. if I am releasing one. Um, I don't get to release one every single Friday. Uh, but if you're catching this here at the time of release around the holiday weekend of Thanksgiving, um, you may see videos come out more than that. If you're looking to purchase these shoes or ones like them, go check out either eBay at uh, my eBay username, Robert E. Powers, all run together, um, or on The Brogue Exchange, The Brogue Exchange. Uh, I am Cobbler Bob on there. All right, guys, have an amazing day. God bless. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on Playlists.